Hello, good evening and welcome. It is Thursday night in the United Kingdom. It is 8 p.m. Uh, my name is Theo Van Dor. I'm the executive producer of Time of the Sixth Sun. In the window below, hiding from us, is Nikki Luna Williams, the writer. I could do that, don't I? I could do that. <laughs> you could. <laughs> and in the window next to us here is Mr. Stu Jemison joining us at 5 a.m. in the morning from Tasmania. Thank nice you to so see you. Much. Hello, hello. Lovely to see you all. And happy birthday to you, miss. Thank you. Yeah, I just spied what, I've just spied what Teo did. He put, he's put it up on bloody Facebook. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I, I read the first few messages and I'm, thank you everyone for your lovely, kind birthday messages or born day, as Stu said. <laughs> yeah, happy born day. So we're having a little, you look like you're in the fourth dimension there, Stu. Well, it's, it's five o'clock in the morning, so I guess it's pitch black. <laughs> Something just happened. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm on Wi-Fi uh, down here. And, you know, sometimes it's a little bit, uh, you just don't know what you're going to get. So we can hear you clearly. So that's the most important thing. I can, I can see my dome head on there. So I guess you've got some kind of image of me. As long as you can hear me, I guess we're all right. We can, we can hear you. You're all, you're all good. You're all good. So, um, so thank you very much for joining us on this very special day. It is the 2nd of July of 2020, which means it's Happy birthday, birthday. Day. Oh, Taylor, you <laughs> <laughs> so happy happy birthday to you luna thank you uh, I that. roses i got from kate kate our lovely third team member oh member thank you kate so Sorry. i i wrote a post in the facebook group today to say and there have been so many beautiful messages and what i wrote is but basically none of us would be here if it wasn't for you Aww. because without you creating this incredible project um it you know this community wouldn't exist these live broadcasts wouldn't happen time of the six on the movie and the docuseries wouldn't be there so um we celebrate you luna for thank you i you allow doing. myself to be celebrated yeah and your uh, and your unwavering tenacity to keep going and keep going and keep going and uh, I don't know if tenacity or stubbornness i'm not sure which but anyway there's a fine line between the two but i like it Exactly. <laughs> Fabulous. So, Stu, are we going to give Stu a lovely introduction? Of yeah, yeah. So, frozen, I'm frozen there in time. It seems. Can you hear me? Yeah, oh, we can hear yes. you. We can hear you well. But your yeah, your 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 picture has frozen. But maybe we'll just give your Wi-Fi a little bit of time to catch up. Um, so well, I'm going to just pull up this slide here while I can. So if you would like to um, find out more about Stuart's work, we'll throw this up as we go on. He has an amazing website, Quantum Connection dot com dot au we're going to talk about light seeding um and we will talk about the path of divine restoration as we go as we go through this beautiful talk with Stu, who's been good friends with luna for a very long time um and i should also let you know if you're just joining us for the first time that you can actually register to watch the movie and the eight-part documentary series that accompanies the time of the six sun movie free for a limited time if you go to time of the six sun launch.com and I should restate that if you've watched it before in 2019 and you'd like to watch it again, you can, you just have to go back to that website and re-register and our very clever email software will know that you're already um, on the email list, but it will let, it will let us know that you want to watch the launch again and you're able to do that. And if you go through the launch, then you can get um, special pricing compared to what it's for sale on at time of the six sun movie.com should you decide you'd like to support us and uh, and go ahead and get one of the digital or the physical packages which are both now still available so um so yeah exciting time so luna let's start right at the very beginning because you and Stu go back a long way so how did you guys meet yeah well first of all i'm going to say to jason no you're not going to see a balloon dance tonight <laughs> <laughs> Um, so gosh, Stu, you found me on the internet really back in the early days, wasn't it, Stu? A couple of years, maybe after I'd started, two, 2006 or seven. Anyway, now we're not hearing Stu at all. So I'm going to fill people in and tell them how I met Stu, uh, which was he saw Time of the Sixth Sun and voiced that he really wanted to help get it funded and so started our friendship. And uh, we got him, is he coming back on before I start? I'm here, sorry, my apologies. It seemed like I dropped out there for a second. 
You certainly did. Are you back? Yeah, I feel like I am. <laughs> yes, okay. oh, looks, it's trying to shuffle around and get me in there. I think um, visually. Yeah, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get you back in there because we've lost your we've lost your camera. Oh, um, it's my little lights on, but uh, for some reason it's um, it's not functioning. Is this Tasmania by night. <laughs> there you go. It does look very familiar. <laughs> if I look yeah. outside, it's going to be the, that perfect picture. That's Tasmania uh, at five in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. Um, I just don't know why. It's got, I have the little light going on. Um, so you might just want to drop out, reboot, and then come back in because I think that usually that sorts all. That, that's okay. you know. Let me do that, mate. Well, I'll do. I'll do exactly that right now. That's the first thing you say to people. It's just, uh, just reboot the machine. Reboot the machine. I had the most amazing thing, Luna. I'm just going to tell this funny story. All right. I was yeah. I was doing technical support. This is when I was like 18 or 19, working for a software company, and uh, and we used to send out CDs, CD ROMs to fix uh, updates on software. And the lady uh, called me, and I said, and she said, I don't know how to do this update. And I said, Okay, right. Well, let's talk you through it. It's not difficult. I said, so is there, do you know where your CD drive is on your, because it was desktops back then. And she said, um, no, I don't have a CD drive. And I said, well, I said, are you sure? I said, is there any button that you can press on the front of your desktop? And you press the button and then a tray pops out. And she said, oh yes, I've got one of those. You mean the coffee cup holder? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes, the coffee cup holder. You could take the coffee cup off the coffee cup holder and then put the CD in and then press the button said magic will happen. <laughs> <laughs> I got and it wasn't that many years ago, was it, when we were hefting around all that hardware? No, no. It's a, hardware. It's, it's Thank a, you, everyone, for your birthday wishes. I'm hearing fear, Luna. Dare, Luna. <laughs> Brilliant. It is all about celebration, isn't it? It's, I've used to find it so hard to take any compliments or receive anything or... But years of, you know, the begging bowl and, you know, can you help us on our shoots and, you know, years, years and years of that. And I've come to to receive with grace. So I'm loving all the best wishes. Thank you. I'm hoping that means happy birthday, Tottenham, but I've got no, I, I've got no <laughs> idea. Uh, there's, there's def there's definitely, Yoko says uh, happy, happy birthday. Oh, yeah. Look, so many, so many messages. Facebook user. If you come up as Facebook user... It means you're in our Facebook group and you haven't clicked the StreamYard link. So then we don't see what your name is. Um, so in the first comment on the Facebook group, there's a little button that says, Maddie says, happy birthday. Thanks, Good evening, Maddie. all. Happy birthday from Danielle. Danielle. Danielle's been with us since the very beginning. Yeah. Um, and Kirchhoff. Happy birthday, Nikki. Um, <laughs> there we are. There's the balloon dance. There's the balloon dance. Harry says happy birthday, Annette. Look at this. There's so oh, I can't actually keep up with all of these. Let's just yeah. flash through them. This is yeah. happy birthday to you, dear Luna. Fair happy then. birthday to you, dear Luna. Great quality. So I think she meant dear, not fear. Uh, <laughs> Judith, look, you got so many lovely messages oh, coming in here. I'm touched. I really happy am touched. Birthday, Thank hello you. from Australia. Oh, there's there we go. Lots and lots. Right, Stu, I can see him trying to get back in the room, but I still don't see. A video of I him. I think if we lose his picture, guys, what we're going to do is keep his voice, his audio up as much as possible so we can do the talk. Um, otherwise, Terry and I will talk between ourselves. <laughs> we'll just keep singing happy birthday to you over and over again. Well, let, let's do, let's add Stu in and see. Stu, are you there? I am here. I am here. I, the only other alternative I could think of was to go back to my phone. Uh, yeah, go back to your phone then. I think that's going to be the best, um, the best idea, Stu. Laptop's not working. Sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. No worries. So drop out and get, come back on your phone. That'd be perfect. Gotcha. Well, you know, we've done 22 of these live, or 23 of these. This is number 24. So um, it's the first time we've had these technical issues, and we are, we are dealing with the complete other side of the world from where we are in the United Kingdom to Tasmania off the coast of Australia. Down under. But Luna, while we're waiting, tell, tell us the story about Stu and give us your intro. Okay, bit. well, I'll you have to give him a quick run, rundown. But we had a, a conversations for a couple of years and then finally he invited me to be part of a team in 2010 who were to meet in the Mojave Desert and uh, we arrived at the gate and it said Zaka, 
population right. eight, and it was actually Zach and Lake that we were going to. So I'm just telling the story, Stu. Welcome back, and you look much better now. Not so fourth dimensional. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to drop you to the bomb and then bring you back in. There we go. Now we're good. Perfect, Mento. So I'm Wonderful. telling everyone that a couple of years after uh, chatting, you invited me to join a group of people in 2010 to a place called Zaka Lake. And it was like population eight people. And you go in through the gate and it was about a half hour drive in the middle of nowhere. Stunning. Beautiful, it was. Beautiful yeah, lake. It was and um, it was to meet up with yourself and, and several other beautiful light workers who all had visionary um, ideas and projects on the go. Uh, we all met up and we stayed in log cabins for a week. And you brought along a Lakota Sioux medicine man called Godfrey Chips. Now, Godfrey is in our, I think it's episode six, which is the grandfather's speak. He unfortunately isn't with us any longer. No. But uh, we did ceremony with him during the week, and he comes from a long line of medicine men. And his uh, father, his great grandfather, Horn Chips, was mentor to Crazy Horse. So long, long line, and he was recognised very early after he was born that he was also in that line of medicine man. So um, he came with an anthropologist, long life friend, Bill Lyons, who we are having on the show on the thirteenth of July. And uh, he'll tell us more about the, the intricacy of the ceremonies. But it, that was the most powerful ceremony I think I've ever experienced, Stu. And I've done, we all have, a lot of ceremonies in my life. But, um, yeah, nothing like that. So I want to ask you, first of all, what prompted you to gather all of us together back in 2010? It was for a 10-10-10 ceremony. But what was your motivation, love? Interesting. Well, well flashbacks, geez. And I think that photo that you used on there i was kind of like uh looking at that a little bit of a time warp back uh goodness me yeah it'd be 10 years wouldn't it but um yeah, well i guess i've been on this journey for a good 20 something years um at different levels of awareness as you go through your stages of uh working out what your divine purpose is here and at that point in time it was to call a, a group of people together to literally um, embed the very nature of what we had been working on for these all these years uh, into the landscape, in literally into the body of the earth uh, to manifest. I guess I've uh, become a little bit of a we we all are you know manifestation machines. That's just the way it is you know. But um, acquiring the tools in order to get there the most efficiently and and uh, hopefully. Um, <laughs> trouble free but usually that's not the case because we all learn the most when we're usually faced with uh, more trouble than we are just pleasantries but but anyway bringing everybody together there i think who do we have roberto we andy trustvark came in folks flew in from overseas we had someone um, very high up in bmw we had um, the yeah. there yeah we uh, had quite well, a few Malfring. Yeah, And I think the interesting thing was, um, it was really, well, I had uh, initiated Potter, which is Path of Divine Restoration, essentially set up as a church, but not like a church as you would know. It was essentially set up to protect uh, natural medicines, certain variation of natural medicines. And, and there, was a, there was a process that I'd been starting to create called light seeding, which was uh, quite literally the sacraments of Potter, which was a variety of different... Um, modalities and techniques and, uh, and natural minerals and waters and everything else that literally addressed the, the sickness and, and, uh, and disease in the body in, a, in more of a core root issue and dealing we'll, with the... We'll the talk root. about those more later, yeah, about yeah. the ceremony, Godfrey yeah. Chips. So we came back, um, I guess, most of that week was really about the preparation for the ceremony, I think, if you remember. It was, and really that's what we, you know, were learning in that process too was... Uh, the ceremony would go for a certain period of time, but it was the days of preparation, the finding the appropriate willow to create for the actual sweat lodge, to find the paints. I mean, here we were out in the middle of nowhere and we had to find red, black and, and um, white or red, black and yellow paint. Where, is it, where are we going to find these things? Uh, but mysteriously enough, we did. We pulled them out from somewhere. I think Nancy found them somewhere. Uh, Under that was a tarpaulin. Part of the that's right. Uh, that's right. Under a tarpaulin. Just happened to look under a tarpaulin. And that was part of the five stick ceremony. We had, I think we ended up, the three ceremonies all happened within about a 72 hour period. 
um, but it was the days of preparation and the acquisition of the, the various sages and everything else that we needed to, to find on the landscape there. So, yeah. Can you tell us about the Yerippi ceremony, which is very much the Chips family ceremony? Very powerful. Yeah, there's some very, um, there is some powerful stuff there that Godfrey used to be, uh, I guess, the purveyor of. And he was um, the quite literally the, the Yerippi ceremony, as I understand it, was a healing ceremony. And um, they would quite often have other ceremonies leading up to that to discover what the issues were. Um, and uh, then going into a Uwipi was specifically a, a healing ceremony. And what would happen from what I understand is they would literally bound um, Godfrey up upside down with uh, sinew. In <laughs> a carpet, rolled in a carpet, yeah. he's yeah. a big man, uh, yeah. and then Not tied a... up with animal sinew. And, and tied up in animal sinew upside down. And by the time the ceremony was over uh, and everybody's hair would have been raising on the back of their necks, um, as they were in some of the ceremonies we were in there, um, is that uh, he would be sitting upright in the middle of the room and the sinew would have been rolled into a ball with both ends in the centre. And the healing would have taken place. And I'd never been present to one of those, but I, I, I do know a couple of people who had been, and I believe uh, Bill Lyon was one of those. Can and, I interject uh, on one small thing? Because I think it's really important in powerful ceremony like this. They had a log cabin and they prepared it for hours, smudging it with sweet grass and cedar and sage, mm -hmm. just the, uh, Bill Lyon and Godfrey. And they sealed it with black tape and cloth <laughs> so that when the door was shut, there was not an ounce of light coming through any crack at all. And that was really important to them. And we kind of found that out when we went in because we sat around and suddenly the sound in that cabin was phenomenal. And it, all the spirits came in and uh, we were all white knuckles and holding each other's hands. <laughs> but it was, Absolutely. yeah, that was powerful. Well, the, the, are you talking about the five sticks? The one that I'm we talking had about the one in the cabin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was, um, yeah, well, R Roberto, who's a renowned sound healer, said he never experienced anything like it as powerful. Mm -hmm. As soon as Godfrey hit the, the drum, it, it, it went from like we're talking right now to boom, like that. And that was it. It was it was on. And oh, wow. uh, and I remember uh, Roberto saying immediately, that was it. Oh, my God. you got uh, And sitting there when the when you could hear the floorboards pounding with these spirits there was no way anybody other than the spirits were in there pounding that floor and everybody i was in tears and i think um talking to uh andy and to uh roberto afterwards we were all these grown men in there just actually having an incredible experience of the nature of nature and uh and some of the greater things that we are unaware of um it was beautiful it really was beautiful and so one uh, of the things we did was we called in our prayer just before the spirits came in. Um, am I correct in remembering that it, we were calling in the money, the finances for light worker projects all around the world? Well, that was part of it. Yes, it certainly was. But remember how many hours we sat there and did prayer ties for yeah. in the tobacco, right? So by the time we actually went into the ceremony, there was hundreds and hundreds that everybody had done. I think I can't remember how many each of us did, but I, I believe um, there's a specific number that we all did and it was... <laughs> It was, a, it was pretty over much a day. Yeah, yeah and, and the beautiful thing was in each of the tobacco snippets that we took and put into the actual cotton and wrapped up into the uh, pouch and wrapped up, it was very much like um, what is it, prayer beads. How you sit there, so you're actually praying into each one, into each mm -hmm. one, into each one and tying it off and tying it off. So by the time we all brought those together, uh, had the ceremony, which was partly to do with discovering uh where the money had been taken had been you know let you uh, lock down where have we been locked down what's been happening here when well, we needed to de dig deeper into the nature of what we were living in here because quite literally um after 10 11 12 years of my journey i knew that there was pieces missing but we couldn't quite put them together and so beautifully enough that ceremony kicked off because we also did 11 11 11 and a 12 12 12 ceremony um but on that particular night of ceremonies or 72 hours of ceremonies um i remember sitting out there the back with uh with godfrey and looking out <laughs> over the sky the the starry sky and this little yeah it could have been a star could have been anything just 
shot across the sky. And Godfrey wasn't a guy of a lot of words, as you know. And uh, I remember saying to him, Godfrey, um, as we're looking into the sky together, I said, we're the aliens, right? We just forgot. And he, uh, in a, a little bit of silence, then it's like, uh-huh. And that was it. <laughs> and <laughs> and then we went into the, uh, you know, we just sat there. I think we went off and had a cup of coffee or something. And then we went to prepare for the five, uh, for another one of the ceremonies. But on the sweat ceremony, the first one that we had, that morning when we came out, um, came back to burn the prayer ties to release them out into the ether. And it was quite magic. And I, I, I know there was a couple of us there present. I don't know who was there, but I, I was very blessed to, we watched these prayer ties burn. And as we were talking and having a cup of coffee, it was really still. But what we noticed, all the smoke literally went out over the top of Zaka Lake. And we're sitting there going, are you, I'm just making sure that I'm not the only one seeing this. This smoke was literally sitting over the top of Zaka. Now, Zaka, as you know, they don't know how deep it goes down. It's only this little volcanic lake, but they don't know how deep it, they tested it out to a thousand plus feet and still haven't hit the, the bottom. Yeah, it's but, amazing. And it's deep green. Absolutely. But the, the ancient Chumash legend is that when they were timed to cross over, that they would go out into the lake and they would come out at Lake Titicaca. So we know that whatever the actuality of it is, is that um, those prayers were sent deep into the into the earth, yeah. into that body of water right there. Yeah. And oddly enough, when I look back over this last 10 years, it could have been 100 years, the amount of experiences, the amount of things that have actually occurred that have um, brought us closer and closer to um, the very nature of uncovering some of the, the deeper mysteries that um, we've all been, you know, I guess, kept from is uh it's been quite extraordinary but yeah we did a uh, ceremony for the next two years after that as well yeah so let me i just want to go back to the prayer ties because tools is, and ceremony is really important for everyone watching so actually what we did is we had lots of little four by four squares of cotton different colors uh the four directions so black white yellow red and we had tobacco and we had a long piece of string so you take a square you put a piece of tobacco into the square you say your prayer and you pull the edges around and you tie it into the long piece of string. You tie a knot and then you go on to the knot's next prayer tie. So a prayer with each one and it's really beautiful. But something very simple that you can do, you know, when you're wanting to do ceremony or call something in. It's beautiful. So it's really just about setting the intention before you even move into the medicine space. And we spent hours. I mean, that was oh. a very important part, wasn't it, Stu? <laughs> Well, we, Peter and I had gone and collected all this, what we thought was willow for the sweat, for the sweat lodge the first time. And then we found out from Godfrey, no, that's not the right stuff. We'd been chopping down the stuff that actually wasn't. You know, so we felt pretty bad afterwards. Secondly, we also had to go and, and, and acquire the appropriate willow afterwards. But yeah, it was hours and hours. And that was the beauty of it was really you were in this state of prayer, of thankfulness, of request and all the rest of it for the hours and hours and hours leading up to, because the ceremony, you know, only goes for as long as the ceremony goes, you know, maybe mm. an hour or, or so, but it was the hours and hours of the preparation beforehand, and particularly the prayer ties, and, and you're putting, literally putting your, your intention, your electromagnetic intention, your being into that tobacco, into that prayer mm. tie, so yeah, very special. It's also very meditative, because it means that you're not thinking about this, that, everything else, you're just focusing oh. on that one thing, so that when you step into that ceremonial space, you're already in that zone to receive and to to be part of it rather than thinking about what did I have for dinner? I'm hungry. I've been fasting for two days. All these things. <laughs> it, gets your, it gets your head out of the way, which is often the biggest problem. Yeah, and Absolutely. it was all of us as well. It was, a you know, it was unique. We were all there doing the prayers for hours together. Oh. Well, it's, yeah. uh, in, particular, in particular in the sweat, I mean, it's so hot that you literally you you are face on the dirt you're in the womb of the mother and you're trying to find oxygen anywhere in order to just be present and in that moment and you because you can't be anywhere else you know uh you know a lot of people will jump and bail and, and because it, be, it can become quite claustrophobic um but uh, the experience and being able to uh you know go through it and with all those intentions with those other parties is very very powerful absolutely yeah. I, on the other hand, was on the outside of the <laughs> sweat lodge yeah, were, because yeah, I was filming. 
And they all went in and we shut the covers down. I was thinking, fuck, I am in the middle of the forest in bear country <laughs> and snakes and everything else. <laughs> and I had a moment of thinking, should I jump in the car? And I thought, I can't do that. So I was like, no, I am the fire keeper and I'm meant to be here doing this. <laughs> <laughs> It's very funny. One little story because he was very powerful. He he actually you met him, I believe, through Pete, who had a yes. brain tumor, and he cured him of his brain tumor and became his apprentice in a way. So half time working for BMW, half the time <laughs> apprentice to this extraordinary medicine man. And yep. um so I've been Dear friends with all of you guys ever since, Pete yeah. as well. I think I've known yeah. since 2003. So, yeah, yeah, we're a good, good group. So I, um, two years ago, I've always driven around in an old banger and charging up and down the motorway in an 18-year-old car, not fit for purpose anymore. So I purchased on higher purchase or finance scheme a two-year-old nice SUV. And I had to laugh when they delivered it to me because the number plate said GY for Godfrey, two numbers, and then ZCA for Zaka. I mean, you couldn't make it up, could you? <laughs> uh, Godfrey's Thank been popping you. up in a few people's word, worlds um, for, for a while now. Yeah, absolutely. He tends to pop up every now and then and give you a little reminder. Yeah. I was going, thank you, Godfrey. And the car salesman is looking at me like, who's Godfrey? <laughs> <laughs> Got my name wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Stu, let's go on to this light seeding, mm. cellular spiritual rejuvenation. It's a fantastic book. And you're right now working on a second, on an update, are you, on a second draft? Yes, I am. I mean, I, I did that one. I, I came out December 2012 uh, that was the date I wanted to sort of imprint my own little piece into that time and place but uh, there were, had been some editing a few bits and pieces some people haven't seen them but I did you know how it is when you got your own little baby that you're working on and you, you know yeah. it's little errors and omissions anyway so it's but it was a, it's a, a philosophy and healing let me just introduce it a philosophy and yes. healing that ceases dealing with symptoms and focuses more on the core root problems and the message is right. don't put toxic substances in an already toxic and acidic body. So what led you to writing this book in your in your work? Was it after your work with healing with miner mineralized waters? Oh, goodness. It goes back to the 90s when I, uh, I guess, initially uh, got in a little car accident with a Mack truck and came out second best. And it's funny, you know, you always hear those terms. Yeah, I feel like I got hit by a Mack truck. Well, funnily enough, I actually did. And... What what is a Mack truck for those of us that that aren't aren't from your hemisphere? Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, that's right. You guys probably don't have Macs up no. there. Okay. Well, it's like if you took a Mercedes eighteen wheeler and um and got hit by a Mercedes eighteen wheeler. I don't know. If that's what you've got over there. Mercedes like a juggernaut. <laughs> it's yeah. like a giant, you know, a, a, an eighteen wheel lorry. There you go. Lorry. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, so that's essentially what it was. But um, and a couple of us ended up a little bit worse for wear, and uh, I'd never been injured to that degree. Anyway, the sporting career ended. Uh, I was playing professional beach volleyball at the time, sort of really hiding from the rest of the world, trying to not engage as much as possible, other than get a suntan and play some volleyball and get paid for it. Now that was was a good escape for a while, but all of a sudden, what ended up being a um uh, seemed to be a bit of a left of center out of the blue experience ended up ended up being really redirecting me on, back onto my path uh, so that was we we're talking 95 94 actually it happened the accident 93 so yeah 93 94 95 when i was living in la anyway so recovering and going through and sitting and spending goodness years with um various different healers therapists practitioners shaman medicine men um, some of the most amazing folks who are, you know, um, highly qualified in the allopathic world, but also amazingly qualified in the, the naturopathic and, uh, and natural realms and um, herbalist realms. And anyway, one thing led to another and um, I was doing all various kinds of studies and, and uh, hanging out and working with these folks hand, hands on. And I started getting open to the fact that, uh, well, I guess it was it started after I went through my own court case. 
was going on during the Rodney King episode and uh, at that time of, oh, actually, no, sorry, not the Rodney King. That was um, before I moved to LA. It was going on during the OJ Simpson trial. So uh, one thing led to another and coming out the end of that is realising that the justice system, there was something not quite right with it. Um, one thing after another, I kept seeing all these parts of this system that were supposedly, you know, here to represent us all were not functioning too well. And it led me into the um, the healthcare system and realizing there was something not quite right here. I was working with a couple of practitioners who were using various forms of light and, and energy based medicines. And all of a sudden they would get a visit from somebody from the FDA or from an insurance company or whatever and say, listen, you know what, we've noticed and we've heard that you've been using this piece of technology, but you know, if you want to continue to keep using it, you can. However, it's now going to cost you an extra $1,500 a week in malpractice insurance. It's also going to cost you extra this, that and the other thing. And of course, what are they going to do? They're going to shelve it. So without even thinking about it, they've just lost something that was hugely of massive value to them that was getting incredible results, incredible turnarounds with people's healthcare and wellness. And these were the kind of things I was just noticing time and time again. And I remember sitting down and said, do you put two and two together? Is there something not quite right here? You know, uh, why would you not be able to use this? This is actually working. And um, I remember a couple of them looking at me blankly going, you know what? I never thought of it before because they're so busy working, so busy doing what they're doing. They just were, you know, it was just one tool that they had to set aside. Anyway, as time went on, um, yeah, I just, uh, <laughs> I was working with some pretty interesting folks. I started acquiring all manner of different kinds of, you know, I must have looked like the crazy, you know, um, fellow running around in California. I, in the back of my car, I had multi-wave oscillator coils. I had all manner of different things. I'd pull them out and walk around and set them up in people's homes and say, come on, sit in here. And they'd look at me and go, are you effing crazy? What are you talking about? You know, sparks flying off things everywhere. And I'd touch them and hold them and say, see, see it's all, you know, it's all safe, you know, and, uh, you know, sparks of light i have a tesla machine and it's very scary to sit in it with these blue sparks <laughs> flying i have to say oh, it's phenomenal they're, they're, they're phenomenal but they're, and there's all variations of those and this is this is kind of what took me on in the early 2000s through that journey and uh yeah you know and, and moving back to australia mum was sick and and trying to present to her uh, i moved back from la to to take care of mum i guess early 2000s and um it's an interesting thing when you have you feel you have uh, certain tools at your fingertips to heal and and uh, and help loved ones and, and friends particularly your mother and uh who won't go for it because she's used to the guy in the white coat who you know has got the stethoscope or pop it on you know crazy old son who's you know been playing around in all these alternative wellness situations that's okay son i'll be okay and uh that was a big learning curve for me was to allow her her journey and, and just be there for her. It took a little bit of getting used to. I wasn't quite uh, sold on, <laughs> on it initially. But um, as that time went along, and I kept coming in and out of the United States as well, and I was with Megzi at the time, who you know quite um, reasonably well, Nikki. I don't know personally. But uh, um, I was trying to work out how do we set some things in place that are going to protect these natural medicines and not have them railroaded out. And I met some wonderful folks through the... Um, Knights Hospital Order, who invited me in with, with them, who were basically some of the cutting edge doctors and practitioners and healers on the planet. And uh, because they were also protecting a lot of the natural medicines that were under threat. Uh, and, you know, you discover, you know, Codex Alimentarius, you go start venturing down all manner of different paths and discover, yeah, well, this isn't new. This has been going on for a while. They've been looking to get rid of natural medicines for a while and bring everything allopathic out because it's a business model. It's about making profit. It's not about reversing disease. And um, so anyway, uh, one thing led to another and we registered Potter in 2007 um, as a starting point. Uh, and that was to protect the nature of what I was discovering as I was driving one day from uh, <laughs> from Los Angeles to San Francisco. And I've got oscillators in the back. I've got a couple of them because I'm dropping one off to some other crazy fellow up in Northern California. And I've got all these different <laughs> mineral packages and waters that we're charging in the field as well that have white light that we've noticed coming out of the water. And going, this is we're on to something really special here. I don't know what to call it. I don't know what we're going to do. And I'm driving along. And I remember just sort of asking 
the universe, so to speak. So what is this thing going to be called? You know, and um, I think I've got, you know, in LA traffic for hours at a time and, and everything else. And I'm listening to everything from Deepak to Wayne Dyer to Greg Braden. And I had all the audio books in there, of course, you know, Carolyn Mace. And all of a sudden I hear this like lightning in a bottle, you know, it just, was just like, boom, light seating. And I, was, and I remember sitting there going, are you kidding? Light seating? I said, that's got to be already taken. Somebody's using that for sure. You know, that's, uh, you know, you hear light seeds, it's light seeds and everything else. And I, anyway, I looked it up. No, it wasn't. So I went about trademarking it and that's kind of where it sort of began. And I'd been acquiring all manner of chapters of information for a while. And, and finally it um, manifested in 2012 as the first situation as a philosophy because um only as a philosophy, not as a practice at that time, because uh, for the previous 10 years, I had had interesting associations with uh, folks who happened to, for one reason or another, um, commit suicide with two bullets in their back, you know, and things like that. Unusual, strange stories where they'd shot themselves twice, obviously, to kill themselves and, and uh, or mysteriously fell off a, you know, 40 or 50 floor yeah. building, you know, and uh, things like that. So I just, I didn't want to push, I didn't want to, poke the bear any further than I was. Um, I'd already <laughs> been sort of, I guess, uh, been doing that, so to speak, as, as um, privately and quietly as possible, uh, but trying to do the right thing. So uh, yeah, 2012 was the first one. I'm now in this process at the moment, here we are um, eight years later where it's been put into a practice. So the ad addition two will be a practice. Um, with, that'll be available on, to it. Before we come yeah. on to that, I just want to go back because that's how I first met you. I bought mm. and you shipped to me these bottles of uh, colloidal silver, colloidal gold, <laughs> ulvic acid. So you really were, were working with the belief in highly mineralizing the body in the correct way in combination, obviously. So oh, absolutely. Because what's we're, we're treating symptoms, you know, across the board, unfortunately, is what allopathic medicine and even in a lot of the, the natural medicines might be using natural medicine, but we're still treating symptoms. So yeah. I was kind of digging around trying to work out what sort of tech and there's various, you know, biofeedback sort of technologies that were available. Most of the best ones come out of Russia, out of original um, background of the Russian space technology, you know, uh, for, I guess, keeping track of the um, the vital signs of astronauts out in space. But the, the biofeedback that's available that you can track the core root issues of. And what I was finding was usually with whether it was cancer, it didn't matter what the actual symptomology, the name that had been given to it, there was a series of possibilities usually that were at the core root of it. It could be one of them that was one of them. It could be two. It could be a perfect storm of them. But they were um, viruses that were still living in the body that were no longer presenting symptomology, so to speak. Um, they, they were uh, bacterias, bad bacterias. They were fungi spores and molds. They were parasites. They were also now heavy metals and a manner of, all manner of other things that we're breathing and sucking in every day from the atmosphere. So those were the things that weren't really being looked at. You know, we're, we're looking at markers in blood and everything else that present you know, cholesterol or this or that, diabetes, and diabetes, and, and, and then we medicate it. So I was just backing it up and we were looking at how do we, re, how do we number one, address the core root issues and get rid of those and free the body up to do what it does, which is gets rid of the symptomology. So, so it was- um, those, yeah. those minerals, Stu, you were putting into the fields, the Tesla fields, these, um, <laughs> yeah, is that correct? Tell, that tell was, us about that, because and and okay, well, I'm actually going to go on from from there, so you can talk about that fully. When when um, in, in those in that those times, um, you had Meg C, your dear partner, and you both took on a young ten year old boy. I won't say his name, uh, who was severely autistic. And what happened over the next few years, Stu? I was on the phone to you all the time, was extraordinary. So when he first came to you guys, you had his hair tested and sent swabs off to the lab just to see what was yeah. going on, core root level. So was this level of toxicity environmentally inherited, uh, genetically like inherited, or was it environmental? Because he was top of the scale, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, little... Um little JC, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, he was, well, he came to us, he was 12, and it was one of those things, you know, uh, that was just meant to happen. Uh, he's still, Megs is still working with him in the most 
amazing ways that things that have occurred since um, over goodness me, what are we talking, ten years now? We'll come to um, that. But what was he like? Is what was he like when he first that, came? But, uh, to you? Yeah. Oh yeah, he was uh, his frontal lobes, um, his uh, adrenals. I mean, he was loaded with lead and mercury. Um, he'd had some, you know, he'd been hit up with some pretty serious stuff. I don't, um, you know, I'll say it, you know, as a matter of he was vaccinated quite, you know, um, significantly as a young child. He, you know, he was initially verbal and then wasn't from about the age of uh, three or four on. Um, but uh, everyone thought he was retarded. He certainly was not retarded. Um, but anyway, he came to us initially for those next couple of years, and I had I still got the results floating around in a file somewhere. Is that on the next eighteen months, we got rid of all the lead, we got rid of all the mercury. His adrenals, you know, came back online. He had energy. He was, you know, actually more energy than we could handle at that time. You know, for uh, but. Um, he was, uh, yeah, he was literally back on track, and we we. We, oh, I say we as in uh, Megsy and and because JC had a um, a mum as well, mum and dad, but they just didn't know what to do. So he came and lived with us, and uh, he did, he couldn't even use the knife and fork or um, yeah. wipe his bum properly, you know, when he first came to us. And so we, it was a really interesting experience because it was the first experience of having a child in, in a house as well, but and not so much a child, but a, a twelve year old, you know. Uh, almost teenager, uh, and a severely autistic one at that. But anyway, what we discovered over the next little while was um, we ended up taking him to a speech uh, therapist who uh, assisted us in working how to have Joshy start typing because he was nonverbal on a QWERTY board. And he needed some assistance because they're not in their bodies the same as, you know, uh, as other people are. And we're not just talking Asperger's and that here. This is, uh, you know, a severely, you know, classified as severely autistic boy. Yeah. And anyway, by the t it was, it was, he had us in tears. The, the first experience was, I believe, um, he typed, thanks, mum, for not giving up on me. Oh, Ooh, wow. I'm, getting, <laughs> I'm getting emotional remembering it. <laughs> but um, wow. he's, a, he, he's a special little fella. And uh, literally, he was almost typing prose. I mean, this kid was not only there, but he was there in Fully. ways that no could have. And, and he would get left up the back of the class, you know, and literally he would shit his pants and wee his pants to have everybody run in circles around. That was his way of getting attention and, 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 yeah. and orchestrating his own little thing. But the fact is, he was very present. Um, and when we realised that now, here we are 10 years later, um, he, he is communicating with uh, other entities at this point point in time um and he brings this down through the qwerty board and Megs might be traveling with him into one of the stores or a bank or something in uh where they reside and uh josh will see something because he sees in lights colors and different ways than, than we do and he's communicating in in other ways he speaks with the great mistress is one of the things that he uh, that he describes and uh he'll see somebody and sum them up and type something to them at, you know, the, at the bank or so, and leave them in tears oh, <laughs> as wow. they're leaving the door because he's just touched them in the heart in ways that, you know, nobody else could. But this kid's um, very special. I, I think he's got some other things to bring yeah. down and share at some point because he is uh, he's truly a divine little being, no two ways about it. But that was an, ex an, extra an extraordinary period so in my life. Yeah. There are a lot of parents with kids uh, one, uh, who are on the scale, the spectrum, yeah. to different degrees. But basics, I seem to remember, basics were you watched like a hawk everything that went into that boy's mouth for well over oh, yeah. two years. Yeah. You absolutely we put him on, orchestrated we put him the gaps, the, the gap. The GAPS diet was something we put him on, which okay. was um, cleaned up everything. He used to eat candles. I mean, he was... <laughs> <laughs> doing all, not for new, not for nutrition or that he, you know, just, just the, the texture, the way. I mean, he was eating he pure was, light. Yeah, yeah. He he was in um, interesting way. The things that his uh, his system was just simply had it, it had partly shut down for a variety of reasons. I used to put him in the field as well, and I'd sit there with him. So and, when you say uh, the field, you'd set up the Tesla machine either side, where yeah, you would put him. Those. How many I've times a week? Oh, I had him in there probably three or four times a week for 10 minutes at a time. 
10, 15 okay. minutes at a time. And, and you charge uh, up the water as well that he would drink? Absolutely. Used to charge the water. I also made a variety of ozone waters for him as well. But one of the waters that is one of the most powerful is to charge in, in those um, uh those fields because if you use the right mineral composition so you can take a, a water and completely take everything out of it all the toxicities and then bring something as simple as celtic sea salt yeah right, back into the water so you restructure it's very similar to our own blood you know and seawater amniotic fluid what we were born in everything else and charge it in that field then all of a sudden you've got this, you know, um, uh, super supercharged ionic water, you know, literally reinvigorating everything as it goes through and remineralizing at the same time. So you put the body in the field, the cells, everything start dancing, you get the water wow. back in there. So it's about reinvigorating a body that's obviously, um, you know, for him, you know, there was a few other targeted issues too, plus getting the diet sorted. And in about 18 months, we, we, we zeroed out all of those toxicities in his body. Yeah. Amazing, you know, uh, amazing job you did with him. Well, he believes he's going to he's going to talk. The great mistress is helping him right now sort it out. And and I'll tell you what, we all want to be around when he starts to talk. <laughs> he's got wow. some special things to share. Uh, no wow. two ways about it. So he's now he's now channeling with Megsy. He's channeling this mistress, and the, you said all sorts of amazing info is coming. I through. believe the great mistress is from a. Um, <sighs> Uh, a system that he apparently uh, is very close to, but he's also talking about the heart of the creator um, as well. So he, between the two of them, the mother and the father is who he's communicating with. And, uh, but anyway, yeah, yeah, very special, very special. The fact that we even discovered that this was going yeah. on, this kid is, it was an incredible, it was an epic journey. It's, it's a, continues to be an epic journey. He's, um, Makes he's been working, you know, gone in and out of his life. He's he's now twenty four. He's living in a group home, and um, we come in and help him out at different times and everything. But he's uh, he's a young man. He hasn't grown much from the size he was, but, but he's <laughs> he's uh, he's uh, he's a young man. You know, uh, a very bright young man too. So, well, I take my hat off you because you you guys just did something amazing there. Just just proved that you can really turn highly toxic person around and what well, what do you feel from hearing that you've got a slightly personal experience oh, Stu, Stu and i have have spoken about this previously about you know about these different different things and yeah i mean you know the as you said the colloidal silver it's it's it is that it's that detoxification of the system i mean you know i've i i chose very early on not to go down the uh injection route um, having done lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of reading. And so, uh, but my son still is, you know, quite out there. And I'm very glad that I didn't go down the injection route because I probably would have associated the two together. But definitely diet, definitely, um, mm. you know, and, you know, keeping him on. And there's some, some amazing, there's some amazing things out there. It's just, you know, you've got to, you've got to find them. Carnitine, yeah. I found this incredible doctor from, yes. from, um, yeah. Czechoslovakia, Dr. Kusera, who comes over to the UK three times a year. And the first time I took, um, we both went to see him actually, because I've got ADD too. I mean, my head is just all over the place all the time. It's very difficult for me to be still. And uh, I, I only discovered really that after I read Gabor Mate's book, Scattered Minds, to try to help my eldest son. And I was about a third of the way through it. And I was, I'm not reading this for him, I'm reading this for me. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. Uh, yeah, and then we put it, we went on it, you know, and he put him on an HRV machine, which is a heart rate variability monitor, both of us. And then it, this machine would then measure the electrical impulses through your system and then it would take a, a reading. And then on a scale of one to nine, one being you're in peak condition, nine, you're, you know, you're in a lot of a mess. And I was an eight and he was a nine. Wow. And so, um, so we then took, started to take this carnitine regularly and flavonoids regularly, you know, morning and evening, morning and evening. Went back after three months, it was dropping. Went back after three months, it was dropping. And then we went this this last time, we were both at number one. So you really? know, the whole body had reset itself to homeostasis using these incredible medicines and tools. Which and, is yeah. what you're doing, Stuart, it's about taking the body, light seeding it, the cells, and taking it back to its original innocent state. Is that correct? Basically, yeah, allowing for it to do that, you know, uh, clearing the way, clearing the part, getting out of our own way, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and 
and it's uh, the thing is too what we've got to realize we've been born into some pretty incredible times i mean we've all whether we like to admit it or not i mean um, we're all born mum's placenta is loaded with toxins that weren't there you know two three hundred years ago you know yeah. we're, we're all coming through with all variations of level of toxicity whether we want to you know admit it or not um, th these are the kind of things that need to change as we proceed forward into the future of course in order to for for that not to be the case and uh, for not to be treat for it not to trigger all manner of other different you know um, issues within us but uh, you know easier said than done um, because again you look at the global issues what are the core root issues going on, on the you know on the planet I love that you know? micro macro well it's it's no different I mean it, it's actually it's there's, there's such a close comparison when you look at okay what is, what is our lifespan okay supposed to be a hell of a lot longer than it is i mean we shouldn't really biologically be aging until pro until well after 100 however that's not the case we're lucky if we make it 100 and you know um but look at the planet it, again comparatively macro micro and everything else you got to look at the systems you know the the parasites yeah. okay interesting one you know yeah. the 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 bacterias you know the fungi spores and molds you can compare certain things yes. going on on the planet to the very same thing right but look how long they've created their systems okay mm -hmm. if you want to go back to the core root of you know what, what I, I know to be some of the the worst of the um uh, of the core root issues they in particular in the last two two and a half thousand years um have deeply embedded themselves and and, and literally um captured the very nature of our own being and uh you know and it's it's been playing out on a global scale you know, internally, you know, we have our own <laughs> drama playing out in, in, in many different ways, depending on the ailments that we're dealing with. And is that fungi spores and molds? You know, is that, you know, a series of parasites that have taken up? And like, these things are all intelligent. We think we're the most intelligent thing on the planet. You know, yeah. Sometimes we are. Quite often, we only <laughs> got to look at the, the current media. <laughs> it certainly wouldn't present such. We've been, we've had our attention captivated and stolen on so many different fronts. We, we've forgotten who we are. You know, I say that generally speaking, because a lot of people are also having catharsis and discovering who they are in the midst of this as well. Yeah. Um, which is what healing crisis is all about. We're in a healing crisis globally right now, massive, massive healing crisis. And, you know, I mean, I, I know in the last few years, if it weren't for certain groups, you know, the, the very parasitic nature of the entity that's been taking the planet over and over and over and you know without anybody really noticing would have had their way and we quite literally would not be here anymore but the beautiful thing of that is that we are and we're having an opportunity right now to really address this and and we can't pretend this shit is not happening anymore and we can't pretend to know the core root issues and wave like you know this is what they are and i don't know i say that in in the most respectful manner because a lot of groups out there that are you know that do know certain aspects of the core root issues that need to be addressed i think you'll find most of our audience is absolutely aware for sure yeah yeah but the, but the interesting thing about that is you have to say well hold on what's the remedy you can know it all day long, but if you do not have a remedy and you don't know the source to go to to affect that remedy into being, you can know the core root issue all day long. You still have to go and actually affect the change at the core root. That's easier said than done too with the nature of how well that series of parasites, you might say, have embedded themselves into the system and or created systems that we've literally allowed ourselves, we've, you know, consented to be controlled for a long time. Well, it's time that we actually, and we, we can't do it running around waving placards and, and getting violent and doing everything crazy. That's all just more symptomology. You're just becoming another variation of the same, of another symptom that's been, you know, started out thousands of years ago, you know, and can really creating more confusion we need clarity we need we really there's, need to just going back to our health i mean there's also a massive yeah. confusion with our health because we're told one thing then we're told another thing it's a very confusing place out there for people who don't maybe have your research background or whatever so 
I, I used to always take colloidal silver, you know, with your guidance. Yeah. I then heard about nano silver and how fantastic it is around <laughs> yeah. viruses. And then I had a doctor of natural medicine here in my place this morning saying, no, you don't want to do that. Your body doesn't like metals. It doesn't want silver that goes straight into your DNA. And I'm like, I don't know what to think now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, again, it's uh, I've evolved through the process as well. I mean, you, you, you create a variety of tools. I mean, the whole thing about this journey that we're on, right, is working out how to firstly, you know, get on track so we feel like we're living on purpose in the right direction. And you want the tools that you need in order to be able to affect whatever it is that you feel you're here to contribute to. Now, in a lot of cases, uh, it's, it's very hard to find those tools, you know, and or do they really work? So then you have to experientially, you got to get your roll your sleeves up and try them out for yourself. Um, we're talking uh, health here, yeah? Well, we're talking, we're talking, you can relate it to whatever you like, just about yeah, yeah. health is one, one of the issues. You know, we want to be healthy and robust and vital and have a long existence. Uh, and we want that for everybody. Um, while we're giving over our responsibility to somebody else to give you that, you got to be prepared for the back ass end of that as well. If somebody that's not going to give you the right advice, you know, sure. and so you've got to go through a variety of folks to find out, oh, well, that one worked. Okay. There's my tools, you know, mm. well, there's the beginning of the start of that. We have to start taking responsibility. It all comes back to that sovereign aspect. Are we sovereigns or are we slaves? Are we told yeah. what to do and how to prepare ourselves and take care of ourselves? Or do we take ownership of that and do that for ourselves? You know, the old medicine men of the day used to just roll into town and help out with whatever they could because it was about care. It was about sharing the wisdom, the information, passing it on. It wasn't about, you know, achieving millions of dollars in a mansion on, you know, in, in Hollywood or whatever it be. It was truly about the collaboration of them bringing their wisdom, their information to the table, sharing it, moving on. It was about healthcare. It wasn't a health profession. Mm. It wasn't about creating fortunes. Money has been one of the lockdown mechanisms. It, it can also be one of the, fr the freeing mechanisms, but not in the way things are at the moment. So I'm wondering, I'm, I'm looking at Zimbabwe, for example, listening to Sovereign Man, and, you know, he's saying they printed money and printed money, and then they totally um devalued everything and they bought in another currency and the world isn't earning from them and now everyone in this time of pand so-called pandemic is now printing money so how does that how will that it's so confusing i mean it's bringing us all to the same level but what do you think that this maybe health crisis has created an economic crisis intentionally why would that be no, right now you've got, um, there's two factions fighting for control right now. One that literally is here for humanity. The other one is not. Mm. Okay, the other one that's not has been around for quite some time mm. and has had us all invest our time, energy, effort and everything into that system. Yeah. For, for, for a sliver of an existence. You yeah. know, um, a, a, a sliver of how we can be here. Um, once, at this point in time, well, you know, the, the very nature of the virus that was released was released, again, to control. And you can see it. I mean, if we ever thought we weren't slaves before, well, what's going on? You know, you can't go here, you can't go there, you can't do anything. We are literally, through implied consent for all of our lives, for many generations, uh, yeah. An owned entity, an owned property. You know, we're not sovereign. You know, this and this is again, it's partly what we've been bred as well in terms of you know somebody in another you know, in the white coat and stethoscope like mum will take care of me. Well, no, they won't. Yeah. Sadly, unfortunately, they're there just to pay their own bills and and, and money being the economic driver. It's the control mechanism. Well, so, some you know, of them, Stu. Some of them. You have to say some, yeah. Oh, well, generally speaking, my friend, you know, but at the moment, what you've got is a system that is has a couple of major lockdowns and money being one of those. You know, you, you've got people writing in streets who are being paid. <laughs> I mean, you know, would they do that otherwise if it wasn't for money? Mm. You know, you know, money being the, you know, I guess the, the stimulus for so many different things. 
Uh, and it's the survival mechanism. This is where we're at. We've been forced into, you know, as things have gone along over the last generations, we've had gradually had more taken away, more taken away, more taken away, more, and we get used to less and less and less and less. But money has always been the controlling factor, yeah. you know. I kind of but, see it as a, a as a failing Dragonian system, no longer fit for purpose. I've always felt they're hanging on by their fingertips, and the 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 more close they are to going off the edge of the cliff, the tighter the restrictions are going to get. But I absolutely trust and believe in that light in the heart, and that's not all hippie woo woo. Mm -hmm. It really isn't. I think it's our time right now, and I'm saying it to our viewers as well, to anchor to really anchor yep. the energy on this planet. You know, there's a lot of people going to be losing their heads. You know, they can't deal with the energies coming into our planet now. Everything is accentuated and accelerated. And uh, for some of us to just keep keep grounded. And I think just like with disease, right, if you want to keep playing with the symptomology, that's okay. Yeah. That's your choice. Mm. You can do that. Eventually, it will probably catch up. Yeah. Same thing with the planet. We need to have a look at the core root issues, not just look at them, but then mm -hmm. once we understand what they are, remedy them. And mm -hmm. we, we're we not even truly aware of how deep those core root issues uh, have embedded themselves in our own lives and, and created psyches. all kinds Sorry? Oh, God. And psyches. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a big part, you know, our lives being, you know, our, our multidimensional selves. They've been very, very clever. This was not done by some stupid people there's yeah. done some very intelligent highly intelligent folks you know and, and to think otherwise would be stupid mm -hmm. you know so i mean you've only got to look right now you look at the the media mainstream media they just suck your third eye straight into the screen that's it you're done for you know you've got to switch it off immediately because then you have to try and get it out of your system that's yeah. the virus. and that's the thing it's getting it out of the system i was having this amazing conversation this weekend with a with a lovely friend of mine who is super super smart he's one of those guys that I have a conversation with and i sit there thinking oh my god i'm really not very clever but he's just he's just super smart and he was saying the biggest problem i see with all of this is the fact that we are being conditioned he said it is yes. the conditioning that is going to take so long to di to unprogram he said the masks you know, the two meters, oh. he said all these different things. He said, because if you actually look at, I don't know if you've ever, you, you must have no, no, know about the monkey experiment that they did. So they put all yep. the monkeys, the chimpanzees into the room together. And then they had a ladder. And then there was a, there was a bunch of bananas at the top of the ladder. And, and a chimpanzee yep. would try and go up the ladder to get the monk, to get the bananas. And they would spray it with a fire hose. And then what they would do. So then so all the monkeys then started to attack each other if they went for the bananas because nobody wanted to get sprayed with the fire hose because all the monkeys got sprayed. So then the next level of the experiment is they take one of the one of the chimpanzees out and they put a new chimpanzee in. And obviously the moment that new chimpanzee sees the bananas, he thinks, oh, fantastic bananas. And all the other chimpanzees attack him to stop him getting the bananas. And one by one, they remove the chimpanzees one by one by one. So eventually none of the chimpanzees in the room have ever been sprayed to actually go up to get the bananas but they carry on fighting wow. and they carry on stopping yeah. each other getting the bananas yeah. because because it's been conditioned and actually mm -hmm. when yes. you look at us as a monkey race because we are 99.6 monkey anyway maybe. then mm -hmm. maybe, then you know what is actually happening to us as a, a you know i see the fear of people you know and i i get it some people want to wear a mask great other people don't want to mask. Great. It's, it's up to personal choice, but it's the fear and the conditioning that the media are putting in day after day after day after day. Yeah. Look at my kids. I mean, my kids are now playing a game called You've Caught COVID. You know, I don't want my kids. I don't want my kids <laughs> playing games like that. You know, he went to the day he went good. Oh, You've caught COVID. That, that is not a game. I want an eight-year-old to be playing with his mates. No. That sounds like tag, like old version of tag. Tag, yeah. you're it. And tag, you got to. It's, yeah, you know what? But but you're absolutely right, mate. I mean, these are these are this is patterning. This patterning has been going on for a long, long time in many different ways. This is, you know, the last ditched effort for a, a struggling, you know, controlling faction that's been there for a long time. Who's one of their last actual control tools is the media. And that is where they are playing this out right now. And they know once they literally shotgun everybody with this absolute viral hideous you know like you're saying 
you've got COVID. I mean, kids, everybody. I mean, I, my, my daughter and I try and laugh about it, call it the cheese virus, you know, to, to, to take the edge off the, the whole thing and, and make it about something that's, you know, a little bit of an inconvenience. But yeah. I know she's, she's the not cheese with me with all the, the time. That's what your cells look like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. But um, it's, uh, you know, we've been, pat we've been set up in all kinds of patterning, you know, uh, and at the moment when you go back into your fear, you go step back into that comfortable conditioning yeah. of, you know, uh, and, uh, and it's very hard not to go there. Mm. So, You've got to be very strong within yourself and within your beliefs and your understandings because, yeah. uh, you know, there, there, is, there is great work being done behind the scenes too. Like I said, this is, uh, you know, people might want to call it good and evil, you know, dark and light, whatever you want to call it, but there are um, great streams of shift and change of light, you know, to bring us back into some kind of harmonious relationship yeah. um, with nature. So, it's about getting back into natural systems. You know, we've, we've, yeah. we've been far from them for a long time. Mm. I see there's some questions coming up. I do have to point out Stu's not here to answer medical questions. Um, a woman has said, how can you reverse diabetes type 1 with your use of the waters? And also I want to come back to something that you're currently working on, which is years and years of working with minerals, that you're now working with something super powerful. I would call it miraculously healing. Do you want to talk about that at all and maybe answer Patricia's question? You know what? What I'm noticing is uh, I'm running out of power there. Well, so what was? But what was the question? And you were breaking up there a little bit. Uh, how Patricia? Patricia asked, "How do you re can you reverse type one diabetes if you were treating someone with mineralized waters?" And well, you know, I'd be looking always. You know, I mean, listen, I've. I've also been working in the last um, years with uh, raw cannabis. Okay. I'd be telling just about anybody at this point in time with the nature of what they're dealing with on the planet, what we are dealing with on the planet. Yep. Um, I, I, I say this to a few friends. I said, I, I, this is, uh, and I, I joke about it. I said, just say you and I, Nikki, well, you know, it was back at the first seeding of the human race on the planet. And I, you know, I'm jumping in the spaceship and we're getting ready to come down or how, whatever it was that we're traversing, you know, in a bubble, who knows, you know, in, in you know, fields of lights, whatever it was. Be like, Nikki, you know, did you grab the plant? And she's like, yes, yeah, too hot. I'm just like, let me grab it. Okay, because I'm telling you, that plant and us are like this. There's okay. something very special about the, the nature of that plant. I'd be encouraging anybody at this point in time that has the capacity. Yeah, there's some wonderful things being made, but you always know when it goes pharmaceutical, it's not as potent as it can be potentially in its natural form. Mm -hmm. And I've found that hand over fist. There's something very you know, unique about our endocannabinoid system that's only so been really in the last 20 that. to 30. Many people don't know about the endocannabinoid. Sorry. Lots of people don't know about the endocannabinoid. Cannabinoid, can never say it properly. System. It's natural to us. Endo. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. Well, the phytocannabinoids, quite literally, it's, it's, there's, there's a form of phytoremediation that happens with the, the, the various cannabinoids that exist in the raw plant. So we're just talking about food at this point in time. It is probably the single most dietary essential that is missing from everybody's diet. And everybody, especially when it's grown appropriately with the fulvic acids and the humic acids that are missing in most of the foods that we that we have because the soils have been over farmed. Uh, if it's grown appropriately as well, then it comes with all the fulvics, with all the humus, which help truck all the minerals into your cells. Then you've got the nutritional factor that's in this plant, along with all the other wonderful CBDs and THCAs, you know, CBDAs, and 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 the got this hundreds of various cannabinoids um, that go to work in a natural form. And uh, in terms of a dietary supplement, you can't go past it. It is pound for pound the most potent thing on the planet. That's why it's being so messed with. And if you've got people growing their own plant. Inducing it in their own backyard at, at home, goodness me! You had that sour sop and one or two other things. You know, that we wouldn't be dealing with eighty percent plus, ninety percent plus of the issues we're dealing with. Um, it's it's a balancer. That plant itself, the nature of it, goes into the endo endo receptors, and it actually works on balancing. If you are deficient in one way, it will help to prop you up. If you're over 
in another, it'll help to bring you back down. It, it's a balancer. It's a beautiful balancer. And what and how and that how would be something do, that I, would I mean, we have, well, anybody. Not, how do people take it? Because obviously, not advocating, you know, smoking. How do you it, you because you 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 crush to create oil? Is that right? No, well, you can, no, you um, you would you would juice it, okay? Fresh yeah, raw juice. Yeah, you know, have five have five or ten mils of it in in a little bit of other juice. You know, to take the taste off. It's very bitter. Mm. Um, or some people that I know are making variations of you know preserving that um, that juice that will last in your fridge. So you'll literally have a raw food version of it for up to ninety days in your fridge. So um, it's. Uh, Taking it raw in that form, you can't you can't go better. Okay, I've ordered a bottle. Hey, I've, I've I've seen everything from people dealing with cancer to kidney stones to diabetes to you know strokes to you know I mean it's just skin conditions. It's, Parkinson's literally it, taking out the shaking in Parkinson's. It's a phenomenal. It's a phenomenal plant. Oh no, yeah, absolutely. Plant. Absolutely, it's a. You know, that's why it's so so much of an issue to get hold of. That's why they want to try and turn it into a medicine. There's so many other medicines, as we know. Graviola, they tried to turn it into a pharmaceutical. They spent years and thousands and thousands and thousands of hours and millions <clears throat> or billions of dollars, and then they shelved it, you know, because they couldn't, you know. So, And that's from the sour sop. So, so you I think mean, that's, that's why? That, I that... would recommend... You think that's why it is because people are asking what plant are we talking about? We're talking about cannabis, but the um, that you think that is the reason why it is so controlled. I mean, obviously, in the United States now, it's becoming legal in multiple, multiple Absolutely. states here in the United Kingdom, still illegal. I don't know how it is for, for the rest of the world, but you know, it's it, it feels like it's been oppressed for a long time because, because there are such incredible healing properties for it. Yes, you could say it's a gateway drug that takes people down a horrible route, Completely. that takes down a horrible route. But if we actually take that all out and, and you go back to the essence of what it was there for, it's actually a healing plant. And that's only if you heat it and smoke it. Well, you, you, it has to be what's called dicarboxylated. And that means heated past a certain temperature in order to either cook it or smoke it. In the form I'm talking about, Tay, this is food. Mm. It's like a vegetable. You could go and take the plant and put it in your Waldorf salad and eat it. Mm. You could take the, you know, I mean, you it, you could go and juice it. And when it's cold pressed juice, and you cannot go and get picked up or, you know, you, you can't get stoned. If you try it, you could drink a gallon of it. You get Not pretty bloody sick. It's wrong. <laughs> but you, 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 you might have a, a crook stomach, but you you wouldn't be stoned. Yeah. Because it hasn't yeah. been activated. It's it's still in a THCA form. All right. Which you is put in it acidic into form. A... It's not in the, the actual. You so put it into a wheat grass, wheat, wheat grass juicer, something like that, to juice the leaves. Yeah, that, that that it, too. It, it doesn't juice very easily. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. what was that, mate? I was going to ask that question. So for people that are watching us in the world where it is legal to buy cannabis leaves, which is what we're talking about, then where, where, yeah. how do you then take it from that form into a form that, that will heal the body without having the side effects, as you said, of heating it where you know, you will have that effect of being stoned. So, uh, just like anything raw, it's take it raw. Chew the leaves, juice the leaves, um, put it into, you know, it, it's very bitter. It, it, it's not the most appealing, you know, some people like it, but, you know, five or ten mils of that in a, um, uh, take it under the tongue, just take it. The main thing is, is being, it, it's a bit hard at the moment because they are making it so difficult. But I can tell you that's why they're making it so difficult because it literally is the closest thing I've seen to a panacea. It's a wow. hand in glove relationship with the with the phyto cannabinoids that exist, the plant cannabinoids. We have an endocannabinoid system from our brain right down into our tailbone that regulates everything in the body. They're only really starting to properly understand it in the last handful of years. Yeah. But um, they understand. They understand that if they let everybody start taking it, they're all going to start getting well. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. And so got, there's some relationship with that plant in ourselves. There's, there's some relationship with that plant in ourselves that goes way, way back. And interestingly, I mean, we've all read the bits of paper that give you the 101 uses for hemp and all the, you know, but yeah. that goes back to the old paper mills and cutting down of, of trees. They didn't want hemp. And so they they um, made it the enemy 
essentially. And that was the beginning of a massive paper industry. So it's been it's been quietened, you know, on so many levels, so many ways. Yeah. Well, and again, hemp and cannabis are very similar. Hemp and cannabis aren't that far apart. Yeah. You know, it's only the amount of THC and the amount yeah. of CBDs in them that, that, that change the difference in what they are, really. They're very, very similar. You could call a, a cannabis plant a hemp plant, a hemp plant a cannabis plant, until you actually pull it apart, you wouldn't know which one was which. Hmm. And CBD oil for, say, people with brain tumors, it can actually, it has the ability, the unique ability to cross the blood brain barrier. Is that correct? Like CBD oil? Sorry, I, I missed that bit. Could you please? Um, with that? CBD oil, it's got a unique ability to be able to cross the blood brain barrier. Well, yes, but that's, again, that's a, that's a problem processed version you've that's an extraction or an isolate so this is what okay. they're doing at the moment is finding all the different extractions and isolates that they can take out of it and affect a therapeutic response right mm. but what they've discovered recently they call the entourage effect is they start putting all of these isolates and <laughs> back together right and all of a sudden they realize oh my god i don't need so much of that oh good i put that extraction with the isolate i don't need so much of that i can put less 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 <laughs> and all of a sudden wow i affect all of these different therapeutic benefits my god that's amazing it's the entourage effect just leave the damn thing in its entirety you know and but of course we have to go around in circles like that you know in the system that it is you know in order to access gain any kind of insight you know and again at the same time keep people confused they don't know which direction yeah. to go yeah and how to get out of the maze you know mm. so. so no more band-aids no more propping up what is no longer fit for purpose <laughs> you which again is not too no. dissimilar to your work with natural medicines kick-starting the cellular system of our bodies so guided by a new remedial transparent narrative um with 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 a resonance for everyone for those souls awakening um what could allow for effective change Stu, at the core root of our failing dragonian system so we, we're constantly going back between the micro and macro effect what would that new yeah. narrative yeah. look like it's massive it's massive. First of all, you've <laughs> where do you find the appropriate group, organization, country, whatever it may be, that uh, can take down the old structures mm. and or work with them hand in hand to reinvigorate them in the appropriate ways? Good question. Yeah. I, I, I've got some answers to that. Yeah. I don't know if it's something that we get into today. It's probably a discussion for another time. I think we'll have you back available. another time. Yeah. But there is there is hope. And I it, also hear it is that available. I hear that with the light. There are a lot of so, light beings working with us right now. You're not are you having trouble? We're all hearing? light beings. We're all light beings. But I'm talking we about light beings who are non terrestrial. Non terrestrial light yes. beings. Yeah. Well, yes, you could say that. And there's also a lot of very, very special, um, I mean, quite literally, folks that you don't come across every day that are doing some work at the moment behind the scenes that without it being done, things might get hairier. And, mm. and, and they may get a little hairier anyway before they get better. But I can tell you right now that there are people in positions right now that literally have that are standing for those that can't stand for themselves, mm. that are standing for those that don't really understand completely the nature of what the core root problems are, but know something's not right. You know, I think we, we all know, know in our guts. I think we all feel that. We know. Yeah, and, and you know what? It's, but, sorry, yeah, I'm having issues with the audio. It's yeah, a little I can bit crazy see. at the moment. I'm just, uh, yeah, trying to hear you. We were having an art, we were having a bit of a, a, a not a dispute, but we were having a difference of opinion last night because I was saying yes, but the power of dreaming and the imagination—it's really important for the immune system, for our positivity, 
and we need to be dreaming these yes. new, you know, we're talking about core root systems being rotten, but um, so, you know, there's, we Bear with me. I'm that. just going to move because I'm going to have to get some extra power. I'm running out All of right. power, but please go on. Okay. You were saying no because... No, please go on. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> because you said, you first of all, you have to deal with the systemic rotten-to-the-core apples. So briefly, give me the rotten apple scenario yes. first, but then please give me mango heaven. <laughs> I'll give you a rotten apple. Mango heaven. I'll give you a rotten well, apple. Well, I think what we're, we're, I mean, it's pretty, you go on. No, I, I, I was just saying, you know, speaking of rotten apples, if, you, if you've if you done any research into Jeffrey Epstein that didn't kill himself, and finally today, Jelaine Maxwell oh. has been arrested by the FBI, um, I imagine there are a few people at this moment in time that will be absolutely um, having problems in their underpants because if and when this all blows up and and all of us that have been called conspiracy theorists we're even pretending that this stuff might be going on to these kids around the world when we know it is going on around the world if this thing does blow up this could be the biggest i hope i hope i just hope that she doesn't accidentally commit suicide with two bullets in the back of the head like they happen to magically disappear the tape from jeffrey epstein's cell when he magically suicided himself yeah. So this is the sort of thing. This is the sort of rotten to the core that, yes, that if we can, if that, if that can start to get broken down by, as you say, these very hopeful, you know, very strong people that that have got the balls to do this and to take on this that's been going on for such a very long time. This exactly. satanic network, the paedophilic network. I mean, that is the biggest thing that we could hope for. I think we're going to see those bricks all come tumbling down very shortly. I really do feel that strong. Well, I can, I can tell you that the the very nature of the the, the child abuse situation that's been happening has been happening extensively for a long time. Um, it was part of the old management's pleasuring themselves, so to speak, um, in the most hideous and heinous of ways. What we've got to realize is that those that were in control before had control of everything. They had control of 92, 93, 94 percent plus of everything on the planet, of all the AI, of all radio, of all satellites, of all of everything, they, you know, of military, of government, of society. They don't any longer, control. Them, do they? No, they don't. But the problem, so this is what this is. This is where we are in the playing it out in the media right now. What you haven't seen in the last five years has six years has been what's been going on above the low hanging fruit. <laughs> the low hanging fruit being the Clintons, being the the Soroses, being the Epstein's, being the literally the face of the hideous folks behind the scene who have been controlling everything. They used to have their crew that were above them that we're basically supporting them. They don't have that anymore. This is what I'm saying. We're down to the point right now, there's some very interesting things playing out. And beautifully enough, there's enough people airing certain things that need to be aired, uh, basically presenting the nature of what needs to be presented. So we can deal with the core root issues. The horrible stuff yeah. that's been done needs to be dealt with. We can't avoid this stuff. These are the core root issues of our time that we've been dealing with as a civilization, as a human race. Yeah. Are we any more important than any of the other species on the planet? No, we're not. No. But can we be a little bit more intelligent about what we're doing? Yes, we can. But not if we're continuing to give away our power, give away our responsibility, give away who we are and what we can afford ourselves, our families, our loved ones and everyone. Yeah. Sadly, we've done that through implied consent for a long, long time. And it's time for that to stop. Beautifully enough, the structures that have been in place that were, we were never meant to wake up and get this done. You know, human race isn't the oldest race in the cosmos, <laughs> mm. you know, but certain things are being affected right now that will allow us the opportunity to recognize what is and isn't good for us and go with what is good because you know in your heart what it is you're resonating towards. You don't just accept what you accept because yeah. you have no other choice. That's what it's been like. It's really a choice point now, isn't it? We're all feeling it. We all know we're at that juncture where we really have to make a choice, whether you call yep. it 
it's a it's a duality choice but whether you call it 3d or 5d or whatever you call it from both worlds oh listen there's there's some wonderful things you know coming down the pipeline like i was saying these guys that we're seeing in the media and everything that are being you know held to task things that are being fleshed out that are you know absolutely disgusting and heinous and we know those things just should not be happening those are the low-hanging fruit there's been a whole series the guys that are in control of governments they're not in control of the planet they're not in control of the country the country is a corporation the, 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 the government itself has been registered as a corporation. Everything has been controlled and tightly monitored for a long, long time. It's about mm -hmm. undoing all of those core root issues so we can be free, so we can be sovereign. That means responsibility for self. Yeah. That means responsibility for our, our environment, our planet, our loved ones. Yeah. You know, we inadvertently sign our loved ones away. They, they've got us through implied consent from the very beginning. This is what I'm talking about. We know certain core root issues that have been going on, but we have to actually treat them with a remedy right now. Yeah. And we also have to face up to the fact that we've actually allowed ourselves, quite literally, to be taken down that path. You know, our parents, our grandparents, and many, many generations beforehand. But, you know, as we're talking about the, the gestation period, that's been a parasite that we've been <laughs> controlled by for a couple yeah. of thousand years. Mm. So it, it, we've only got to go and look through our history. Yeah. Stu, you were declared officially through lawyers. You uh, uh, declared your own sovereignty. Yeah. Sorry, I had to bring it up. And that lawyer, sadly, is no longer with us. Yeah, yeah. But um, I want to know if your understanding of what it is to be truly sovereign has changed since you did that. But first, I just want to, if you wouldn't yeah. mind bearing with me, my understanding is, because I might be voicing stuff for other people, we're all born sovereign, and that obviously is irrefutably our truth and our human right. We're answerable to no man, no law, only to God, creator, spirit. So in that case, does it also mean that to be truly sovereign, we must be able to take full responsibility for ourselves, like you were saying, for the rest of our days, without relying on anything that taxes pay for, or so we have nothing to do with our government, and it's being created basically by false laws. So how how do we survive with a foot in both worlds when you want to be sovereign, but you have to drive on tarmac? Uh, you need to tax your car. You, we need to use hospitals if we're sick, or not necessarily. Um, use a passport if we want to travel by air and through customs and when we land in another country. So here's the rub. We're so yeah. entrenched in this 3D world. And what I'm asking is, is it possible to live a 5D reality at this point when you still have to pay your rent and all of that? What do you, as a last thing, because we're coming up to Absolutely. our Absolutely. Nothing wrong with living in... Nothing wrong with living in multiple layers of existence. That's what we are living in nice. anyway. Yeah. But when we're locked, when we're locked, when we're locked down from birth, right? We don't even realize it. Your mum and dad signed your birth certificate. They literally signed the beginnings of something. But by the time of you're seven years old, and of course, who's going to be creating a last will and testament by the time they're seven? But if you haven't created one and and, and brought it into the system, you are literally classified as lost at sea and a dead entity. You are taken into maritime and admiralty law and traded as a commodity. Your body, your soul is the only thing you come with, with any value. That is it. And it we leave with our body and soul. We don't leave with any, we don't own anything. Yeah. We don't own anything. What If you had a system that was set up to support the possibilities of our greatest accomplishments here, and not that was based on actually a handful of people creating money off you as a commodity and giving you allocations and benefits and things like that, right? Then it'd be a whole different world. But you have to create the appropriate systems to support that. And that means exactly what you said, being completely responsible. You have to have systems in place, new medical systems, systems at work, financial systems based on... You know, the kind of things that work in correlation with Mother Nature. Yeah. Asset-based systems, not debt-based systems. Last 70 years, they basically took what was set up to reinvigorate countries after the First and Second World War that were devastated. And they've been running with it ever since, mm. which was fractional reserve banking. Right? Now we're in up to our 
Okay, that's just one of the problems. <laughs> okay, so yeah. one of the core root issues was money. Money's a lockdown mechanism that we've been a, that we're a slave to. Like I said, why would people go and and riot? Yeah, they've been paid. Okay, it's money. It all comes back to money. How many times have we compromised our own essence for money? We do it whether we'd like to admit it or not. We've done it. You know, every dollar we've got in our pocket has blood on it. Oh, damn. All right. It's time for that to change. It's so. simple things. Since we have Ooh, that you're gonna get me all you're gonna get me all emotional. I know, <laughs> I can see. I know you're getting teary, but I'm angry. I remember when I interviewed yeah, uh, you, you cried. Uh, we first had this conversation when we were sitting in, in 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 Australia in September 2017 when we went down to finish filming the film. And we were sitting there with Jagger, Simon, uh, Gary Simon Jagamara, and he was talking about this and he was talking about the straw man. And he was talking about the fact that we are not sovereign beings. And exactly as you said, the moment your parents sign that birth certificate, basically you become, you know, and the fact that our passports and our driving license are all written in capital letters which is dog Latin. And that, that goes back to the time of the Roman centurions yep. where basically you, you, you are not a living entity anymore, which means if you're killed, you're killed. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. And it's, Latin. Things like, it's things like my, my, this is the, this is a V5 in the United Kingdom, which, which basically, so I, if I own a car, you have to yep. give them the V5 and it says on the V5, this document is not proof of ownership. So it's basically saying to me, I don't own my car. They own my car. I just registered it with them. <laughs> Mate, like, you don't own anything. There are things that are there in plain sight that we are not even aware of. <laughs> yes, Teo, you, you just hit the... Mate, my, my brother, you just hit the nail on the head. Your money in your bank account isn't yours. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's how little... We, we don't own anything. Okay, so the money in your bank account, right? You personally, your car your property, the government are all owned in the same system as an asset to them, a commodity for them. Okay. Mm. That's essentially what they've been doing for all this time. Your country is registered under one umbrella. The government that runs your country is registered under another. <laughs> the thing is, this has been done masterfully for a long time. Yes, the very nature of the, the birth certificate thing is ingenious. And, and, and by through implied consent, we literally have said, yes, own us. Yes, we are yours. You know, OK. And that's one of the lockdown mechanisms. The money and the sovereignty are tied inextricably together. Yeah. But how are you going to leave that system behind? So you have to now we either have to re-educate the, the actual leaders. The leaders don't even realise that this is the case. No. This has been going I, on for I, so long now. I wanted to come in here because it's such a huge conversation and to say, really, we need yeah. to send compassion to those people for they know not what they do. <laughs> so, they really don't. And, you know, bless no. them, the error of their ways. No, and, and you know what? This, this You're absolutely right. And interestingly yeah. enough, on that note, Okay, when I said low hanging fruit, government's one of those two. The power structures go so far above them, they literally just been they, they haven't really had fiscal responsibility or true responsibility as a leader for their countries ever. So this is something that they're going to have to learn how to come. And, and again, if we're going to be honest about this stuff, we got to talk about this as it is, you know, yeah. raw and real. Yeah. <laughs> right? No more yeah. bullshit, no more uh, symptoms. <laughs> to, to deflect from the core root issues that need to be dealt with. There's a lot out the, there for everyone to look this stuff up. They can read about it. We're so it's three yeah. minutes over our one and a half hours. That, You're yeah. well, listen, we can go into this. It's another, another conversation. And, and you. Wonderful deep rabbit hole yeah. we could go down should we choose to do so. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it would end up going down here. <laughs> right, let's bring up your details, Stu, for those people that have joined later on in this. Yes. So let's, let's talk see about where we can buy your book. So quantumconnection.com.au. I will stick that in the comments in a second. And um, Stu has also set up a, uh, a, fun, a fundraiser to advance light seeding. So if you like the sound of what Stu's talking about, and you've got, you know, a couple of dollars you'd like to help him with. And I'll put that link into the comments, too. And it says Quantum Connection is a research institution grounded in the optimization of the human experience, passionately committed to cutting edge research and providing education, products and services that promote the prevention and control of dis-ease 
in our fellow human beings. So I'll put that up. Uh, I'll put those links into the comments for you, Stu. And um, uh, you're awesome. And um, and I just a reminder for, for those people that come in, we are offering the movie an eight part documentary series, which Stu is featured in uh, in both part or well, all of it. Um, then you're able to go to time of the six sun launch dot com, register your name and your email address. And if you'd really like to help us, then you can um, share that with other people that you may think would want to watch the film. And if you're loving these live broadcasts, I, you know, I say this, but we, we Luna and I have to pay. We're a team of two. We have to pay fifteen hundred dollars a month just in technology costs. And, uh, you know, and I know Facebook's free and, and YouTube is free, but we have to do all the work behind the scenes to make lots of things happen to then bring you these broadcasts. So if you would love to help to donate with these ongoing costs, then um if you go to time of the six sun movie.com, not launch.com, there's a donation link on that page. And we're super grateful for any that do come in whatsoever. I mean, so, we don't pay ourselves. Tay and I haven't paid ourselves over these last years. And um, we're often, guys, you wonder why sometimes we don't answer things or get in there on our group. But one, two in the morning, often, Tao, we're both zipping messages back and forth. We work really really hard and sleep really little anyway that's what Stu's we didn't have a photograph of it so that's what Stu's book looks like and the revised version is going to be out soon it's a fabulous book and thank you Stu for all your work you've done over the years because it's all been leading to this point and I know you have got something very fascinating to tell us you've done very well not talking about it and, <laughs> but we will <laughs> We will be talking about it. It's about remedy and there are beings out there working alongside us. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it there. But thank you for all the work you've done, guiding us all and working with these amazing remedies. And I, I definitely would like a bottle of your, you allowed to say what it's called? No. <laughs> yes? No, no. Oh, I'll, I, I'm yeah. sure I could find Later. somebody, I could track somebody down who's making some of that stuff and we could sort it out for you. That's not a problem. Exactly. Yeah. Lovely. But, thank you. But but uh, listen, thank you both so much. It's so great to see you both and, uh, and just to catch up. And uh, the fact that it's getting to contribute to your wonderful catalogue of um, information there, I, thank you. Thank you for including me. I, I do oh, appreciate well. it. And, and I know you. that we've got so much more to discuss because... Uh, we're all in this together and we're only getting out of this together as well but we all have to address some of the nasty nastiest of the nasty in order to get past it and uh, yeah. it, it might be uncomfortable to start with but it will all resolve into a beautiful opportunity forward so um yeah have faith and just keep loving on each other and happy birthday to you miss nikki luna Williams. <laughs> Oh, poor, poor Jason's missing my balloon dance. <laughs> oh, sorry, Jason is over. <laughs> <laughs> it was brilliant, Jason. You missed it. Wow, wow. That's the thing that none of us will forget. <laughs> my birthday and I'll sing if I want to. You know, people are asking where they can get a bottle. What's the best way if people want to do that? Go to your website. Is there a contact form? It's or no, it's, 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 there is a contact there. Uh, I may be able to point you in the right direction. I do know some people that are doing very limited boutique bottling of things at the moment in different parts of the world. I'm actually in the throes of negotiating with some people in California right now to make this stuff available. Yeah. In all of the years that, um, that they've been making, you know, all versions of extracts and isolates, still nobody doing the nature, or creating the nature of what we're talking about, but that's about to change. Um, Nikki... Well, Peter and I are working on that in for the United States right now. Yeah, it's basically then a food product, not a drug drug product, and uh, that's where we're heading with it. So, yeah, fantastic, such a pleasure, Stu. Yeah. You're a dear brother for both of us. Really appreciate you and well, your team. Likewise. The whole team. Yeah. Oh, listen, so, who have we got a next beautiful week? Beautiful team of people. Yeah. That you, you always ask me this, Luna, and I, I'm, I can never remember. I'm, I'm about to tell you. I'm sorry, everybody. You might see a bit of chest action here. Oh, so we have fabulous Mark Cuthbert on Monday, who is super oh, extraordinary. Cool. Our lovely Mark. Mark. You know so Mark's him. The guy in the movie that tells the story about being boarded by the Somali pirates and yep. how he befriends the pirates and manages mm. to get away with his life. But he's also featuring heavily in episode four or three, Ancient of Future Technology, where he's the guy that talks about the quantum vacuum and how they've got these incredible machines that can pull thing, pull energy out of the air and that they've had this 
power device that's been running for over 10 years without any electricity supply. And he is an absolute mind of information. I, I spoke to him earlier. I think he said he was going to be listening tonight. So really looking forward to it, Mark. And also that whole story about being kidnapped by pirates, that's actually one of our bonuses. So anyone who purchases the digital um, version of our product, uh, it's it's there. Yeah, all so, the physical because yeah. they get the digital included. Exactly. Yeah, exciting. Stu, have a beautiful Friday. It's uh, it's 20 to 10 at night here in the UK, but it's now very early in the morning for you in Tasmania. <laughs> Thank you for getting up so early to come and speak with us tonight. Thank you. We went down a whole lot of rabbit holes I wasn't expecting, but they're always the best chats. Yes, absolutely. And I'm just getting oh, my own back my, from him. Thank you. Get, getting you out of bed thank at five o'clock. And thanks for putting up with my, my crazy Wi-Fi down here. So, and... Uh, <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> it's all good. It sounds we like we've you. been talking over each other, so... Anyway, your excuse and your excuse for always waking me up in the early hours of the morning. <laughs> I got you back. All righty, have a beautiful night. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you on Monday. Lots of love. Well. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy to birthday you. To you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Good night. Bye bye. Happy birthday, Lunaniki Williams. <laughs> bye.